What's happening, Fish and Friends, and welcome to another episode. Now, today we're doing something a little different, a little different for my channel, that is. We're going to be turning this into something that resembles this. Yeah, winter here in Iowa kind of puts a damper on the fishing. Yeah, I know there's ice fishing, but the ice still keeps coming and going between safe and not safe here. Besides, the days are shorter, so I can really only go ice fishing on the weekends. I've had to think of other things to do. So I invested in an airbrush. I am still very new at this, but it's been a fun process thus far. You know, taking something like this, a blank canvas, and I'm not an artist, you know, and turning it into something like this has been a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take you over to the workbench. We're going to get looking at all this, uh, the equipment, what I'm doing, and hopefully we can make this look like this. All right, so before we get started, let's take a look at the colorway that I'm going to kind of put my own spin on and replicate. So a sexy shad or a chartreuse, sexy shad, say that 10 times fast, always kind of has the same characteristics. So it's got kind of a bluish top, kind of a grayish top on some of them. You can see they're kind of a, a darker blue gray, depending on what brand. Moving down sometimes into that gray, and then there's usually a line across the middle. This is a, a Berkeley War Pig. You can see they're a little half ounce. Has kind of the yellow stripe white belly and a little orange mark there at the chin the cotton cordell spot kind of similar the bluish gray down into the yellow line white belly orange dot the strike king red eye shad that's that chartreuse sexy shad light blue up top chartreuse line in the middle you can still see some of the scaling there yellow line under that and then it's kind of got a white glitter glitter throughout the bait there and then a little bit of an orange there on it so again Pretty close. Now this is kind of, mine's going to be a mix kind of between this and some of these others. So this is a, I believe what they call a citrus shad or a citrus sexy shad, something like that. But blue top, green in the middle, no yellow line there, but it does have the chartreuse on the bottom, orange chin and then pearl in the middle. So this is one that I did the other day. I thought it turned out kind of cool. This is in a little square bill. So again, you can see the blue up top fading into a green, into a chartreuse, into yellow then red on the chin. Highlighted the eyes there. So that's what we're going to try to mimic today. So let's get stuff set up. First step, and I didn't bore you with it, is to take one of these blanks and you have to get it primed up. So I have a couple here primed up. Now I'm not priming this one white because as you can see on this blank, or this lure, I want those scales to show through kind of dark. So I've taken a couple of these white blanks. I've painted a couple black. Let's grab those. Okay, here is our black blank. So you can see there, it's kind of interesting when you do the lure painting. I have so much to learn, but you kind of have to think backwards. So I've got the black underlay. I'm going to cover that with some netting. Now this is just some regular, you know, mesh netting you get at Walmart. Nothing too crazy or expensive, but I'm going to cover it with that. I'm going to get some alligator clips on it, some of these little dudes, and get that nice and tight. So whatever this netting is covering, that's going to be left in the background. So it's going to give kind of those dark lines back there to make the scales. And I'm going to cover that white. All right, got our blank cover there with some netting. Got it good and tight with the alligator clips. You want to make sure it's good and tight. That way it leaves the black under it. If you have it loose, it's going to get under the netting and it's not going to look right. So let's load up uh, the old airbrush with some opaque white and cover that. All right, got the workstation cleaned up. Oh, I need to put a glove on. Now it's time to spray. All right, I'm about uh, 25 to 30 on my pressure here. I'm just gonna go even strokes. Get this covered with black. Of course, it's a little harder. White wants to show through. Did I just say that opposite with white? It's a little harder that black wants to show through. Anyway, whatever. All right, the white's all covered. Now I noticed during the spraying of that, this side was up a little bit. And you can see if you look very close, see how my netting moved? One of these was not completely tight, so I tried to tighten it down and stretch that netting just a little bit. Complete beginner mistake. Like I said there, make sure at the beginning your netting is very tight all the way around. So it's all right when you make those, you know, like old Bob Ross said, it's just a, a happy accident. You can just work with it. So let's see uh, what we can do with this. Let's heat set this. Heat setting simply means I'm taking a hair dryer. This is a heat gun I got cheap off of Amazon. Applying heat and air to it. That way I can get this good and dry so that paint's not going to bleed into the other layers that I put on top of it. All right, got the old airbrush chamber cleaned out. So I'm going to work my way up the bait and kind of start fading color. So I'm going to go to a yellow. This is an opaque yellow. Forgot to shake it up. All right, this is an opaque yellow. So I'm going to use a few drops of this and I'm going to feather this color up the lure. All right, I know that looks pretty bright in there, but I'm going to turn my pressure down to about 12, it looks like. Now I'm going to take this and put it on real lightly on the bottom. Oh, I'm going to say fourth of this lure. Let's go with a real light layer of yellow on the bottom. 
as I showed you on that lure up there, I had just a little bit of the scaling on it. I'll try to do some even pats here just on the bottom of this. Make it real light so you can see it's not a crazy bright yellow. Just keeping that pretty tame. Same thing on the other side. You can see there where my see where my netting's coming up. Didn't do a good job there, Debo. Good work. Good way to show the world that you don't even know how to put the netting on your lure. The trials and tribulations of Debo's fishing. All right, there we go. So I've got a very light layer of yellow on there. You can see not anything too crazy or dark. Let's fade that up into some chartreuse. All right, there's the next color we're using. Technically, this isn't chartreuse. It's fluorescent yellow, but looks pretty darn chartreuse-ish to me. Now, you can see in my chamber, I'm not even going to clean that out. I'm just going to leave the yellow. I want these to kind of mix and merge. Now, I also didn't heat set that because I want these to kind of bleed into each other. Um, that's some good tips that I've learned from some of the individuals I've watched. I'll talk about later. Um, when you heat set that, it really heat sets that color so you can, you know, if you want hard lines, if not, if you just leave it wet, they're going to kind of merge into each other when you feather them through. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to try to stay off the face there. I'm going to come just under that gill plate. Fluorescent yellow to come through. There we go. That's the color. I'm going to angle my bait a little bit so it kind of spits up and feathers up into that next color that I'm going to put in. That's going to be kind of my lateral line. It's right in the middle of the eye, generally about the lateral line on the fishes. So you can see I put that just a little bit heavier. That's kind of hard to tell on camera, but a light yellow fading up into that chartreuse. There we go. Again, light yellow fading up into chartreuse. My camera has trouble picking up the difference, but I swear there is a difference there. All right, got the chamber cleaned out for this next color. Pressure's still crazy high. All right, took that air pressure down. We're going to go with a fluorescent green. We're going to feather that into the chartreuse and then end up with the blue on the top of the back. Ooh, this stuff's bright. I haven't even used it yet. This bottle's hard. I've noticed some of these bottles are really soft and you barely want to touch it or else 73 drops come out. Some of them are really hard. I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that. All right, so let's fade up into some fluorescent green and then end with some blue on the back. I'm going to angle the bait so the very top of it is going to be that blue and kind of the back here is going to be the fluorescent green. That's kind of cool. I haven't used this color yet. So you can see there when I shot at the angle, the top is still all clean, but I got that fluorescent green there. Can't even really tell my transition on the yellow at the bottom. I kind of, I kind of shorted the yellow layer. I didn't get the, I didn't get the color layer it deserved. All right, I'm happy with that. We got that layer pretty close on each side. That side has a little bit more of an S shape to it, but that's all right. I'm still trying to learn this thing. That's what I was going for was more of a hard line like that. Man, lots to learn of this airbrushing stuff. All right, got the chamber cleared again. We've got to do the back of it now. So notice the netting is still on. I want to try to leave as much of that mark on as I can. I don't know how that's going to turn out since that was kind of loose, but uh, this is going to be the Wicked Laguna Blue, so that kind of light blue back that we're going to do. Let's do that next. In the words of Taylor Swift, got to shake it off. Okay, time to do the back of it. So I'm going to hold this bait just like this, looking straight down the back of it, and I'm going to paint, and I'm going to kind of hold it tilted just a little bit to the side. So instead of hitting like this, I'm going to tilt it just a little bit each way. You can see this side I got up just a little bit farther. That's all right because I'm going to let some of this spray off down to the side of it. And kind of merge into that except for the head I'm going to try to paint straight on right there so that's good and solid blue I want to keep these cheeks white try to do something just a little different that you don't see on normal bait so spray this good even strokes here now toward the top of it there this face part I want to try to keep that off the face you can see they're hitting it straight on I'm not really putting any paint on the side of it so I'm just gonna go straight up and down on that face but on the sides here, I'm going to angle this just a little bit so I start to creep into that green. And that's going to kind of fade that color. At least that's what the professionals say. I, on the other hand, am not a professional at this. Hopefully you folks enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, you know, being able to do your own colors is pretty sweet. It's also crazy to see what all goes into painting just one lure. You get a lot more respect for it. So you can see there, my blue kind of merged with that green a little bit, kind of ties it in a little bit more on this side. I'm just going to angle that bait and try to hit that corner there. There we go. Fluorescent yellow into that green, which kind of makes that chartreuse. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. I think we're ready to heat set this. You always want to heat set with your netting on if you have it wet and try to take it off, which was what I tried to do the very first time I did it. It just smears it, and it's kind of common sense after you've done it once. It's like, oh, yeah, I should probably have heat set that. All right, we got that all heat set, so let's very carefully take these off and try not to move the netting all around on it. 
All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if one side looks good and the other looks bad. Rip that off the top and there we go. All right, that turned out better than I thought it was gonna for as loose as it looked. That's the look we're going for. Pretty cool, so you can see it left the bottom layer there. Kind of dark, some of the white seeped under it, but that's fine, I didn't want completely 100%. Trying to be careful with this. 100% dark, but that turned out pretty good. You can see it left all those little holes there where the scales are if you go just black and white. Ah! You can see how it looks there toward the front of it. Pretty cool, pretty cool how it does that. You can see where I had the netting real tight, how it leaves those good, hard, sharp black lines. Where it wasn't as tight, some of the white got under there, which actually kind of gives it a cool look. Now the bottom here, with the clips on the bottom, you can't really hit the bottom. Um, I could have you know, tried to do that. It's not a big deal because I'm gonna fade from the bottom up the same way I was fading from the top down. I'm gonna do that and fade into this bottom. So I'm gonna re-hit this uh, bottom with blue right now first. That's gonna kind of give it a dark underlay, that kind of the same color that's up here. And then I'm gonna go over that and hit that with kind of a, a white real hard in the middle and kind of feather that out. I might even go into kind of a yellow white. I'm not sure what we'll do yet, but it's kind of cool because it takes some of that scaling away from the bottom. Heck with it, let's just leave the top. So let's get this uh, in some clamps and get the bottom of this covered with some white. Some other guys here that are primed and ready. Sorry, we'll need you later. All right, so there we go. I've got that in the helping hands there. That way I'm not smudging it up when I'm doing the actual painting on this. Since I don't have the netting, I don't want to be figuring that all up. So, All right, added some white into this. So instead of that being a full blue, you can see there it's kind of a real, real light blue tint to that white, which is kind of cool. We're going to feather that up from the bottom. And this is the pearl white. So instead of being just a white, you can see there's kind of got that shimmer to it. It's got Real little flecks of glitter in there. That way it gives it kind of a pearl shine to it. All right, sprayed some of that out on the paper. I like that. So we're going to cover this bottom. And I want to make sure that I'm not getting too far up the sides. I want to cover just this bottom. And I might do a couple layers. Heat set this in the middle. Cover this. So you can see there it's just a tad different. Tad different from the white cheeks. Just a little subtle blue in it. And hopefully that pearlescence shines in there. So. All right, I got the light blue on the bottom, and I'm not going to lie. I thought I was going to be happier than a dog with two full bulls once I got it on there, but I'm not. It goes kind of in that sky blue on the bottom, and I don't love it. You can see there that bright white against that. I don't, I don't necessarily love it. So I think I'm going to go back over that with just some of this pearl white. Kind of give that bottom a little shimmer. I'm just going to hit that just up into the, the fluorescent yellow there, maybe a little bit on the face just to give it some shine. Let's see what that does. All right, there we go. I got the pearl white on the bottom and I like that a whole lot better. So you can see there, it still does just have a little twinge of that blue back behind it, but I put that pearl up into that yellow. You can see how it blends the bottom there. Gives it that nice kind of shine. When you pulled it on the side there, you can see where it almost looks like a silver going up into that yellow. So I kind of faded that bottom up into that yellow, up into the green, up into the blue, and that's there we are. Now a color like this does great around here in stained, dirtyish water. You know, these bright colors really show up really well. You could even leave that green off there if you want a more of, you know, just the, the traditional. You could take that white up farther, kind of replace that with just that chartreuse yellow. You have a very similar, you know, standard sexy shad type look to it. But I want to do something just a little bit different. That's the fun with making your own lures. You can kind of do whatever you want. All right, I got some opaque black. This right here, got some opaque black loaded up into here. So I'm going to do a little bit of shadowing on those eyes. So I'm going to put some black just in that and take it just outside it to kind of put a black ring around the eye. Then I also need to put my shod, shod? shad dots on this lipless. Then I think we're done. I think we're going to call it quits. We'll pick some eyes. And that's it. So I'm going to put this back here. I need both hands to do the eyes to steady. So let's get those in. There's one done. You can see I've put just a little bit of overspray on the outside of that just to kind of give it, I don't know, kind of a cool look. I like the way that spray looks on the outside of it there. Do the other one here the same way. Then I need to add my shad dots. All right, there we go. And here's looking at you. So, okay, let's put our shad dot in. Now the shad dot I'm going to put right kind of in that fluorescent green. Hopefully y'all can see it there. Yep. Put it kind of right in that fluorescent green. I want the middle of the dot to kind of be just up to kind of where the middle of the eye is. I'm going to look back basically almost under the line tie, I think. Make sure there's no overspray going to hit. I'm just going to want to go in little circles. So when I'm taking my tip of this, I'm going to go just in itsy bitsy tiny circles to build that circle up. 
I'm gonna wait in the middle and take my finger off. I notice one thing when I'm spraying like this, this is a two-stage airbrush, so this is the Iwata Eclipse HPCS. Um, when you push down, that's just air, in case you've never used an airbrush. Just air, and then when you push down and pull back, that's when the paint comes out. So pulling back uses the paint, just pushing down is air, but as you're doing this, you wanna make just itsy bitsy tiny, tiny circles to build that shad dot up. And I could use a template and make it completely round, but if you look at shad in nature, None of them have a completely round shad dot. So. Oh no, those are almost exactly right on. I think the one on the right went up just a tad higher, but I'm happy with that. I'll take that all day for a freehand dot from a noob like me. Just learning the old airbrush. I don't think those are bad shad dots at all. Okay, so picking out eyes. I've picked up a number of different eyes. These take a five millimeter eye. So we could do, go with just a plain red eye. That would be kind of like the uh, the Straight King Red Eye Shad, I suppose. A little different red eye. It's got kind of the black pupil there, a little bit different space with the white around it, kind of cool. We could also go with just kind of a silver holographic eye. I don't know, what do you all think? Also have some with kind of a gold in it. That's kind of neat. Oh, actually I have some of those yellow ones. That might complement the yellow on it nice. Let's go with yellow. Okay, to put the eyes on, you need some super glue gel and my X-Acto knife. Get a couple drops of this on there. All right, that stuff sets up quick. So let's get one of these off. Now each side's gonna be a little different because these are not made for right and left, but there we go. How about that? Look at how much different that makes it look when you put the eye in there. It really brings the room together. The yellow in the eye, I'm gonna make it so that is on top again. There we go. That's down in the socket. That's it. That lure is donezo. All right, fish and friends. That's gonna do it for today. Here's a final look at how it turned out. I was pretty darn happy with it, looking at it up close. Looks a little bit better than I was thinking. You can see there the sides kind of have that scaling on it. Yellow eyes look good in there with a little bit of that black ring around it makes it look neat. Top of it there is kind of that light, sort of babyish blue, still has the scales, I left those. Bottom of it turned out a whole lot better there with that pearl white, really gives it that shine kind of going up into the sides up there. I really like that. So that is the bait all around. Let me know, comment below and let me know what you guys think. Do you want to see more of these? And if you do, what other patterns do you want me to paint? I know this is a pretty simple pattern, but I'm still trying to get the hang of everything, the paints, the pressure. There's a lot to it. And heck, it may even benefit you if you comment below and let me know because maybe somebody will get this lure and others like it when I do these videos. And for the shout out tonight, the shout out tonight goes to all the people that have helped me with this stuff and have got me into it. People like Marling Bates, Ray, Social Bass Angler, Messer Bates, and another YouTube channel, Jekyll Bates. If you wanna check out some amazing lure painting, some stuff like this, go check out Jekyll Bates. I'll leave everybody that I just talked about linked down below so you can go check them out. If you like this kind of stuff, if you wanna learn on your own, kind of like I did, um, Jekyll Bates, I learned a ton from watching her video. She's got a ton of talent. She tries to help people out by showing you know what she's doing, how she's doing it a ton of information out there. So if you're just getting into painting your own lures or you want to look into it and you know kind of see what all am I going to have to do, check out some of them, check out their channels or check out some more of mine. If you want to see them, comment below and let me know. But that's going to do it for me. Enough yapping. I'm going to do some more. So uh, thank you all for watching. Until next time.